Excellencies, dear colleagues, today I'm wearing a traditional fabric from East Nusa Tenggara, Indonesia, while my delegation are wearing different traditional fabric representing the diversity of over 1,000 ethnicities in Indonesia. We are diverse, but we are one. Mr. President, the world now is at strategic crossroads. Global solidarity and collective responsibility are the only answer to address trust deficit and global inequality. This is the main essence transpired by the Bandung Conference or Asia Africa Conference in 1955. Through the 10 principle of Bandung, we call for respect toward human rights and the UN Charter, sovereignty and territorial integrity, equality of all races and all nations, peaceful settlement of dispute and promotion of mutual interests on cooperation. The Bandung Conference reminded every country of their equal rights and responsibility in maintaining peace and stability, mainstreaming win-win cooperation, and championing solidarity. Indonesia bring along the Bandung spirit when we presided the G20 last year, chairmanship of ASEAN this year, during President Jokowi visit to Africa last month, and we will bring this spirit everywhere we go, including to this UNGA. The Bandung spirit enable Indonesia to listen and become part of solution. For Indonesia, global leadership should not only be about power or about the influence to dictate others. Instead, global leadership should be about listening to others, building bridges, respecting international law consistently, and put all nations equally. Mr. President, Excellencies, rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity is the theme for this year UNGA. This theme is timely and on point. We are again at the strategic crossroad, as in 1955. Trust deficit reappears, lack of solidarity resurfaces. This situation has hampered the attainment of SDGs, especially for countries in the Global South. The question is, do we really have the commitment to rebuild trust, to reignite global solidarity, to attain the SDGs target together? Will our presence today at the UNGA really bring commitment and show readiness toward a global unity and collective responsibility. Standing before this esteemed assembly of the UN, we said a lot of good words and promises. Let us now be honest with ourselves. Do we do what we said we would do? If all of us are committed to do what we said and say what we do, I'm sure the current world situation will not be like what we see right now, where trust deficit is running deep, where differences are soaring high and sharp, where wars and conflict are tearing us apart. The problem is that we do differently than what we said, we say differently about what we did. We do not walk the talk. Mr. President, Excellencies, again this break drop, I would like to share some thought on how we can rebuild trust and reignite global solidarity in line with what we envision through the Bandung spirit. First, forging collective global leadership. The fate of the world cannot be defined by the mighty few. A peaceful, stable, and prosperous world 
is a collective right and responsibility of all countries, big and small, north and south, developed and developing. We all must do our part and work together toward this common goal. And this can only be achieved if all of us adhere to the same rules of the game. We must uphold respect for international law, particularly fundamental principle of sovereignty and territorial integrity. This will ensure that disputes will be settled on the negotiating table rather than at the battlefield. A collective responsibility is also needed to the people of Palestine and Afghanistan. For, for far too long, we have allowed our Palestinian brothers and sisters to suffer. Indonesia will not back an inch in our support for Palestinian statehood. In Afghanistan, Indonesia will do its utmost to help the Afghan people and ensure the right of women and girls are respected, including their right to education. Second, advocating development for all. Colleagues, every country has the same right to develop and grow. But the global architecture of today only benefits the selected few. Trade discrimination against developing countries continues to happen. Global supply chain is being monopolized by certain countries. Many developing countries may not meet the SDGs by 2030. They also struggle with foreign debt and development financing. All of this would contribute to eroding trust and solidarity. Therefore, it is time for us to make a real change. Industrial downstreaming must not be an exclusive call of developing countries. Developed countries should also support this call to build a stronger future together. The same ideals are applicable in our fight against climate change and sea level rise as well as safeguarding biodiversity. Indonesia has led by example by fulfilling its international obligation, including being among early signatories of the BBNG agreement. But developing countries cannot do this by themselves. We need developed countries also to fulfill their responsibility, including on climate financing, green investment, and transfer of technology. Technology and innovation should not be exclusive for the selected few. Access to safe and secure digital technology for developing countries, including AI, is crucial for future sustainable growth. This is time to practice what we have preached. Third, reinforcing regional cooperation. Colleagues, regional institutions should be net contributors and building block for global peace and prosperity. As the ASEAN chair this year, Indonesia had to navigate ASEAN through such geopolitical dynamics in the region. ASEAN has already managed to do this for the last five decades. We send a clear message that we will not let our region to be a pawn of rivalries. Instead, Southeast Asia must be an epicentrum of growth where all countries can benefit meaningfully. Inclusivity will forever be the pillar of our region's architecture building. It is sufficient to say we managed to pull through. ASEAN have maintained its unity and established a long-term vision for ASEAN 2045. ASEAN have reinforced its centrality in strengthening regional resilience and preparing for economy of the future. ASEAN have initiated closer partnership 
with the Pacific Island Forum and the Indian Ocean Rim Association for a stable and peaceful Indo-Pacific. We translated the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific into concrete and inclusive cooperation. On Myanmar, implementation of the five point of consensus remains the main reference. ASEAN continues to urge the military junta to implement it. ASEAN will spare no effort to ensure the people of Myanmar are not left alone. Mr. President, before I conclude, I wish to underline a point on the reform of our multilateral system. Many proposals have been produced throughout the years, but we are still far from getting anywhere. The best time for action may have already passed, but the second best time is now. Let us translate our commitment into action. The 2024 Summit of the Future cannot fail. Trust and solidarity must be part of this effort. Our people and the world await, and we must deliver. I thank you very much.